All right. Ooh, super, super loud because I'm right here. Um, so I'm going to turn it down real quick. I'm also going to... Add a noise gate. Okay, too low. That's better. All right. Uh, hi everyone. My name is Wheeler. Welcome to Wheeler's Minis. As I move down some camera stuff, I am super f professional, as you can tell. Um. Welcome to Willier's Minis, where I normally paint minis pretty consistently on stream, but I've been super busy the past few weeks and uh, weeks coming up. I'm going to be moving at the end of this week, so uh, Thursday will be the last stream for probably about a month and a half. Um, but before we get started with that, a few quick things to get it with this, a uh, few quick things to get out of the way. One, if you aren't already following the channel, please do. If you have a financial ability to, please consider subscribing. Don't forget that you, if you have an Amazon Prime account, you can subscribe for free once per month with a Twitch Prime subscription. I would love it if that was me. Um, check out what's in stock at the store right now at www.wheelersminis.com. And yeah, doing a giveaway. All the info's in my. Oh, sorry, that probably was really loud. Uh, all the info is uh, on my socials. If you want to follow me there, it's at Wheelers Minis on pretty much everything. So, um, the plan is to, for the first like thirty minutes or so, uh, build a character on Eldritch Foundry. I've been. I am an affiliate with them. Um, I've been, and I have the ability to, because uh, I have their subscription service. I can basically just download STLs for free, um, which is pretty great because I print a lot, uh, and I've been printing a lot of my character models through them. Uh, so I wanted to just do like a quick little run through of all the stuff that they have, and yeah, just kind of go through everything. And then uh, after about thirty minutes, hopefully we'll have something done. I'll print it out and then I'll paint it on Thursday. Um, but. Uh, yeah, the goal was to have people uh, pick what I was going to make. Um, so we'll see if anyone shows up. If not, then I'm just going to roll a d20. Uh, and there's 21 characters on here. Um, so I'm going to roll a d20 uh, within the next couple minutes probably and go through... But as you can see, they have a lot of uh, stuff that you can do. Like I said, I'm an affiliate with them. So if you ever have a character model that you're wanting to do, I've got a link up in my uh, socials as well uh, that you can go to. And I just get a little bit of a kickback from it. But I really like the work that they've done. I like the character model things that they have. Um, and they're kind of just always increasing the kind of... I don't want to use the term stock, but um, they're updating all of the assets that they have on the website pretty consistently. So it's really, really nice. Um, but let's go ahead and roll a dice. I am keeping, keeping Alien out of there because I don't have any need for those creatures. Uh, so... Basically, Elf is 1, uh, and then it just keeps going all the way till Wargast, which is 20. So let's just see what we're going to make today. It is a 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Making a Frobolg. All right. And then we'll roll D6 for uh, masculine or feminine. 1 through 3 is a man. Uh, 4 through 6 is a is a ma one through three is a masculine body figure uh four through six is a feminine body figure feminine body figure it is all right so we've got a feminine bodied furbolg huh they tend to be druids uh they don't have uh any monstrous lineage so i think we're going to just keep it where it's at on that um i don't think i want them to be an amputee although if they did have like a i guess an asset that i would like to see is if they had like a a vine arm or something that'd be pretty cool um all right upper body 
So Furbooks tend to be pretty tall. So we're gonna put it put them at six foot. Their head size is already pretty good, but I'm gonna make it just I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller. Long neck. Uh, no, I'm gonna I am gonna give them a bit of a longer neck, but not by much. And then shoulder width I think was good where it was where it was at. Um, chest is good, arm mass is good. So you can link them and give them a bit longer arms. Got a pretty wide waist. Shout out to me and my wife. We got big butts. I'll give, give some beefier legs. Um, as far as I'm aware, I don't think fur bulks have tails. So I think we're going to keep that without, and they definitely don't have wings. All right. Uh, no horns. Actually, you know what? Let's see. How many D&D &D classes are there? One, two, three, four, eight, nine, ten, Fourteen. If we get rid of two of them, let's just say because they're always druids, we'll not do druid. And because everyone likes cleric, we won't do cleric. So let's go ahead and roll a d12. Figure out what we're gonna make them. Ten. All right. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A warlock. All right. So we're gonna make them a warlock. Maybe we'll give them more like punky hair then. I think I like the mohawk look, so we're gonna go with that. Give them like nice full eyebrows to match that. Humanoid eyes, throw bald ears. I wanna keep the beards or the ears. No facial hair. All right. We'll make them. Yeah, I like that. Give them a bit of a cocky attitude. I like it. Kind of like their face as is. Give them more downward facing ears. Like their nose but there's like so much you can do with the characters which I love like you can just very much make them look exactly like you want them to which is really really cool all right so now on to clothing now I think we gave them really cool hair, so I don't think I want to do... I 
I don't think I want to do anything like that. Uh, let's see, around the neck. Let's work on the torso first so we have a better idea. All right, so Warlock. How many? All right, we'll do a d10, and I get to pick four if it's a 10. One, two, three, four. The Fiend. All right, cool. That helps out a bit. All right, so we've got a Pact of the Fiend, or a, yeah, Pact of the Fiend, Furlbolg Warlock. Oh. So they are light armor. Maybe we'll give them a... Not plate, but if we can find some leather armor, which I know they have some. Jerkin. So we got the leather jacket. I just want to see if there's any other things. Oh, we got an armored leather chest piece, which could work. Yeah, I think I like that. So now for the hands. like one hand that has like a gauntlet on it all right and then for leggings we're just gonna do regular good old leather pants to match with our Part of something. Yeah, she's wearing something else. Hold on. I like the hands. I'm just trying to figure out how to get rid of the skirt. Here, let me reload it real quick. Hopefully it keeps it. If not, we'll just go back through and do it again. There we go. All right, clothing. Let's get some pants. Let's 
So I think we, what, we did just the leather pants. Yeah, we'll just do the leather pants. And then for the feet. Do some nice stompers. Uh, I don't think we need a cape for this one. But there are a lot of options for it. And then let's see, for, I don't think I want any glasses either. I like the, we did a lot with the face. All right, so we'll go to handheld stuff. Flame coming out of the gauntleted hand as like a show of the magic that's happening. Let's see. Simple weapons. Huh. All right. And then I get. We'll do like a, a gesture with the. Finger guns for Eldritch Blast, I think is actually a, a fun one. Yeah, I like the finger guns better. Finger guns for Eldritch Blast, flames for the thing. But I mean, like I said, there's just, there's a ton of stuff. Maybe we'll do flaming skull instead. No, I like just the flame. And then you can really like make it however you want when it comes to changing it around to make it look a specific way. All right, on the back, I'm not the biggest person when it comes to like back items I'm more of a side item person so we'll go to side items but like they're like I said they're shields miscellaneous musical instruments like a bunch of stuff that you can do um, all right so for a warlock I'm thinking maybe some vials we'll do vials on the other side But I got some capsules. Love the Griffin Saddlebag reference. All right, we're back. Uh, now we're gonna do the pose. Let's see. Oh, sorry. I like that. So we'll do a 
We'll actually switch the handheld stuff around. So we'll do flames and the other hand, and then finger guns with that one. I like that pose. All right, now we get to pick the base. Oh, we'll go with, I think we'll go with the round base. Maybe we'll add some Lot of nice cool flame ring on the bottom and then let's see what are we gonna do for not temple won't do cityscape don't want dungeon duh, don't want standard I'll do Like a cool little desert. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, we'll make it so that the flames are in the back, which is really cool. That's a pretty cool model. Say that she's a pact. I don't know. We'll figure out what her pact is later. But, like, I mean, that was 25 minutes. Full character. Already. Pretty cool one at that. So, this is our Furbolg. Furbolg, Warlock of the Fiend. She looks pretty cool. I like that. Just some cool stuff. Not too crazy. I don't think I want to add anything. But again, there's a bunch of stuff that you can add to the base. It's just, it's really easy. Like, I really like, I know there are other companies, specifically the one that I'm thinking of, that like also do custom character models and things like this. But you can get... High detail resin, um, double sized things, or you can print it off on your own, which is what I normally do because I print and paint things. Uh, but yeah, that that's literally all it took. 25 minutes and we have a Frobolg Warlock character who's got some finger guns shooting Eldritch Blasts in a direction. So I think that's everything. They also have ready models that if you want to buy, you can buy them, which is really, really cool. Um, but yeah. There she is. Let's see. Let's come find a name.
Thank you, fantasy name uh, generator. Her name is Festina Ashbreeze. Go ahead and add her to the cart. Like I said, if you have a subscription, you can basically get uh, at a certain level, you can get free STL downloads, which is really cool. So what I'll do is hopefully um, tonight after I finish the stream, after painting, I'll print her out, I'll primer, and then we can paint her on, on Thursday, uh, which is super exciting. So um, yeah, order received. It, it was that easy. But like I said, they have a lot of very already ready things that people have made. And then you can basically share the information. And now I have a little thing of her that I can post online and yeah, that's it. So that's literally as simple as it is and as easy as it is. Uh, if you're interested in it, please feel free. I, I When I put this on YouTube, I'll post the link below for my affiliate link. Really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, that's how easy it is to make a character. Um, all right, I am going to go back to the mini paint and chill uh, screen for a second while I get the other side of things ready as I get ready to paint. And I will see you all in a couple of minutes. Uh, yeah, see you soon. Everything should be working. Water now. We're going to continue working on the Minotaur from last time. Commission piece. Character model that I've already done. Put the commission right there. Put this right here. I got more uh, of the stands from uh, Red Dress Games because they had a Kickstarter for them a while back and I got those. All right, so we're going darker on the skin tone. Uh, I did miss the face a little bit, but honestly, that's not too bad. So I think I'm actually going to do more of a dark brown tone on the um, on the fur to kind of mix it up a little bit. So we'll go I don't remember. Oh, we use Brigadine Brown for the uh, leather bit. So actually, we'll go We'll start at Tree Ancient and work our way up from there. All right, let's see, what do we want to use today? 
day. It's this one. New water in the wet palette. gonna start kind of painting up trying to keep some spaces a little bit darker but really just attempting to hit all of the parts of the fur up here for the yeah I guess it would be for the mane I guess the mane is technically still fur Um, and then if we need to, we can come back over um, we can come back over this with the uh, speed paint or contrast paint to darken up some areas, make sure that the shadows are still showing, things like that. Um, but for now, I think just getting a good amount of paint on here. I'm, I'm doing things a little bit differently than I normally do. Um, I'm definitely being more, I wouldn't say lackadaisical, but I'm just being more, not worrying about the details at this point than I usually am, because usually I get very caught up on the details of things. Um, throughout the entirety of the painting process, but every once in a while it just helps to take like a step back and just kind of enjoy the tedious work. And not fret too much about where the paint's going. Um, because I, like I said, I'm painting just a little bit differently than I normally do. More, I, I would say like pop art style where you've got like very dark recesses and then um, very light and heavy edge highlighting and things of that sort, as you can see with like the skin tone and things like that, which I'm not used to painting like but I want to always challenge myself to do new things. And this is definitely something new for me. So we're going to see how I like it, how well it works, and then move on from there. And then when this guy's done, he will be up on my website for sale. Sure that I have more stuff available on there after I sold out when I went to Emerald City. got that blue dragon up for sale I'm actually really proud of that piece too I don't tend to do bigger pieces very often so when I do it's always a treat
starting with this darker I mean it, it probably doesn't look very dark on the screen and it definitely doesn't look dark on the model either um, but it is one of the darker of the ruddy browns so I'm starting with that Again, still trying to keep some of the recesses uh, darker. I don't want to get too heavy handed on it. So that side looks good. That side also looks pretty good. Again, just kind of lightly going in and Putting some color on the edges of pieces and the like. Just to kind of get that color in there. Yeah, like that. Flipping over real quick. All right, and then I, he does have some tufts on his legs too. So we'll go through and do that as well. that the fur matches across the body. I was really excited about this piece because uh, if you watch the last stream, I, I don't really work with yellow too often. It's just not the color that I tend to work with a lot. So when I was like, I'm gonna go yellow with this guy, I was super excited because it's something that I don't normally do. So I was really excited to get to paint it and then I got super busy getting ready for this move um, but now that I'm back at him again and again I'm just really excited to get him kind of all painted up and it's 
see what he looks like in the end. Not being too careful, but still being careful enough to not get paint in places it isn't supposed to be. The beautiful thing about paint is if you don't like it, you can always start over. feel like I've done too much on here I will just come back over it with the uh, whatever fur speed paint I used and just go over it like that uh, but I am relatively happy with it so I'm gonna get some obsidian skin out so I can make sure the paint is the face is painted up sorry about it. Print. I've also been watching a lot of videos recently about like making sure that you have the proper tools for your job so I picked up a lot more sable brushes to make sure that I am making high quality products and delivering the best value I can.
bad. And I do have to figure out uh, what I'm going to do about the uh, horns. I think because I... I think because I painted the hooves black, I want that kind of keratin to mix. So I'll probably mix some uh, probably do them black. And then kind of work my way up from there. Whatever color I want them to be. to help match the rest of the model. I mean, I might put some brown in there too, just to have some delineation so that you can tell that they're not just black because very few things in the world are just black. Um, so having a little bit of the brown peek through isn't the worst thing. is just to make sure that it matches with the hooves because that keratin is most likely going to be very similar in color due to the fact that it's sourced from the same creature. Um, but like I said, I might add a little bit of brown in there just to add a nice variation. So far, let's see. Next very quickly. So we've got all the all the base coating done. Now that we can start to focus on like. detail-oriented work, which we've already done some of. That's what I did. A little thought.
because now we can start working on the washes. is just going to be the shade for I think it's just going to be the shade for the leather the leather bits but if I if it hits some of the skin and I like it then I might just do it across the entirety of the model honestly I like the way that the skin looks right now so I might just keep it the way that it is but I just want to make sure that there's something on these leather bits to make sure that they have good shading to them. It's not that they don't already, but I just want to make sure that it is compounded upon by putting some actual shade paint on them to really help that delineation between the leather and skin. entirety of the rope is going to get hit with this as well because um, strong tone makes rope look good it's got all of those nice ridges to catch the paint so unbelievably well it would be a disservice not to paint it and it'll help me see things if I miss them that are supposed to be leather
a dark tone on the uh, metal bits, but I think I'm going to hold off on it this time. I really want to see what happens when I don't paint with it, because I don't do it very often, so just want to see what happens. All right, so that's all the leather bits on there. Uh, for the purposes of this, I know it probably might look like uh, metal to other people, uh, but I really wanted to, I just felt like leather fit more with the vibe uh, for these bits, um, especially the way that it's molded around the arm. It just feels more like it's leather than it is anything else, so that's why we're going with leather tones on these pieces. But if you had this model and you wanted to paint it, paint it with a uh, metal bits there, uh, by all means, you can do that. in any of these models I am uh, a merchant I am licensed uh, through my mini factory um, for these companies uh, but this one I believe if I'm not mistaken is from rescale miniatures formerly Lord of the print um, but they rebranded um, so if you're interested in these models be sure to check them out give them some love they make really, really great models every month. Uh, some of the... Some of the... Um, themes for the month aren't always my favorite, but that's the case for every single company that I buy uh, 3D files from. Um, and that's just kind of the nature of the game. Uh, but it's worth it. They put out great stuff month to month and I highly recommend them to anyone uh, some of the companies that I go through don't have merchant licenses left anymore um, so if you're unable to get those I apologize but this is rescale minis and if I'm not mistaken they should still have some slots available for merchant licenses and even if you don't want merchant and you're not trying to sell just getting the 3d models they do have stuff open on both their patreon and my mini factory so just things to think about the leather bits done with the wash. Looking good. Alright, let's uh let's move up the list I guess. So obsidian skin. Next 
one up from that is Onyx, I think. Yeah. Oh, hi, Benny. <laughs> yeah, uh, honey cut my hair. Sorry, I just realized that this isn't pointing towards me. Um, it was just time for a change. It's getting very warm out with summer, so I decided to give it a nice cut. And by that, I mean I asked my wife to cut it. They like the 90s heartthrob vibe. Yeah, they did a really good job for someone who doesn't cut hair professionally. They did an actual phenomenal job. Now, mind you, they've been dying and cutting their own hair since they were like 17, but. This guy I'm going kind of with the muscle striations because I think that that looks cool and I've seen it on other models before so that's kind of what I'm doing with this guy looks really good sometimes I forget that even though I've taken a step away from this for a bit it does I'm not half bad at it Having this kind of striated look also helps with the fact that he's probably got very thin fur. So this kind of look helps almost engage that thought in your brain as you're looking at it. Which is awesome. Yeah. I like the way that that looks. communities to help me figure out the humidity problem up here because when your ambience at like 25% especially in the summer uh, it's not great and cohesive for painting with something that needs to stay wet Honestly, though, I, I don't, like, I still have that, like, phantom long hair syndrome where, like, every once in a while I'll go in to try and, like, 
move hair out of the way that's not there just because I've been so used to it uh, but it has been it has been quite nice just not having a lot of hair again and it being shorter um, I won't say that I necessarily missed it in any capacity but it is it does feel nice like I said now that it's starting to get warm again sable brushes because they're kind of workhorses but they're not great for detail unfortunately they don't really hold a tip very well but I don't kind of really need them to I just need them to do what they're supposed to do and they do that so I keep them in the lineup start to become a problem then I'll just toss them. paint the nails too it'll probably also be that kind of like black tone that I did for the uh, hooves and the horns uh, and funny enough now that I think about it being as it that it already has that kind of um, I already have yellow tone in it, the 
yellow toned leather. On top is just gonna fit the color profile very well. Shall we get Did not do plate metal? We did rough iron. No. We did rough iron, which lends itself to a bronze. Hey, 420 blaze it. True Copper is our next one, and then probably our Edge Highlight for this will be the Bronze, because it is a little lighter. True edge highlight because I'm probably also just going to do a little bit of edging for these pieces. Too much, but just uh, enough to 
change the color a little bit. of lightly brushing over it all to add some differentiation of color because and then what I'll probably do is make the rivets a different color too just to kind of add a different element to the armor as a whole but for now just kind of messily going over it with this true copper Thank you. 
Yeah, just brightening up this metal is really what I'm doing right now. I'm being quiet because I'm focused. I have that brand of ADHD. Um, but yeah, brightening up the metal from just the base of where it was at um, is the focus right now, uh, which I think these are the last little bits of it. Um, and then when we get to the point where I highlight, I will just go over and highlight with um, um, the weapon bronze, which is just brighter than this. So, and again, I think it fits the color scheme well because it's kind of that like orangish tinged metal. So it'll go well with the uh, kind of darker browns and yellow vibe that I've got going for this right now. So. back to the hair and moving our way up on that I think demigod flames is what we did for the cloth if I'm not mistaken and then after we do this we'll go work on that This one I'm just being a little bit more delicate on because this is starting to get into detail work. Uh, we'll probably go one level up from this for the actual highlights, but this is just kind of touching up on spaces and really giving it that kind of like look where you can tell that it's, you know, natural fur because very rarely will you. Uh, very rarely will you see uh, fur in any way, shape, or form that is just one color blank. Um, it always has some kind of variation within it. Even if the colors are like very closely put related, there will still be variation in that for you to be able to tell, oh, this is, this is natural. So that's what we're doing here. We started with a very, you know, dark base. Uh, and now we're working our way up the color family so that there is more variation. And for this, I'm going with the, the ruddy browns. Um, I just think that they look good and I think that they'll fit the color scheme that I have for the rest of this lovely minotaur. So I think this one specifically is a dryad brown. But I'm just being, you know, a little bit more gentle, hitting up spots, making sure I'm not overdoing it. Oops.
hopefully just hitting up some spots that paint might have been pulled off from my own just movement of the piece. Because we're getting into lighter tones, uh, that tends to lend it lend itself to spaces that are more exposed to you know, sunlight, air, what have you. So this stuff is going to be more mostly on the higher spots, with some of it being in places that are lower just to keep the consistency of variation. But Once I get more moving up the color range for like the fur like this, some of these places down here probably won't get that next color up because they're in shadow and they're not going to have that kind of highlight color to them. And that's just kind of naturally how things work sometimes. So when you want, the best thing to to do when you're painting something that has a real world reference is to look at that thing but also just understanding like oh hey this space is going to be darker because it's not touching the light as much you know Th those things for me they were really big helps in understanding just like how to better paint because once I started to get a grasp of that I really started to up up my game on painting. similar to what I was doing with the the skin just like going over and pulling it down you know how the model is naturally positioned you know you're not going to paint hair like this horizontally you're going to paint it in a way that helps you know fulfill the natural progression of the way that it's moving so just those small things like over time it, it takes time to get here because i definitely was not i i have not painted what i would consider this well the entire time that i've painted i mean you can go back to the start of mini paint and chill back when this was the stream many things and really get a good view of you know what my skill level was at back then but it's just like much like anything, when you start to practice and do more of it, the better you get at it. And that's, this is just something that I've been passionate about and I kept doing. And even when I moved, I, I just knew that I wanted to continue doing. So I really focused on honing my craft and getting better and building, giving myself the materials to be better and things like that. So.
ないのかじゃあ普通はそうやなじゃあ普通はそうやな。Yeah, Yeah, you want it to match up as best as possible, but. I might not finish this one today, which is okay.、Um, I'll probably I'll work on it most likely off stream、uh, just because I do actually want to work on、um, the character that we made earlier on Thursday. so... Alright, one of the biggest reasons I'm doing this and just painting it all underneath this color is because、um, this stuff right here probably is just his fur. So I want to make sure that it's got that color on it already. Yeah, see, like I missed in here and things.、Um, but painting it like this means that even if there's a part of it that Is exposed, it still is going to show up that color. Like it's going to have the shade that already matches the color that it's supposed to be. So, alright. So, here's the thing yellow already looks so good. I don't want to muck it up. Alright, and then I'm going to take some. Paint over the bits that might have gotten accidentally hit by the yellow. I'm pretty sure the color that we started with was the demigod de flames. This will confirm. Yeah, okay. So that's the color that we started with. Beforehand, so I just need some extra attention. So I think the vast majority of this was already done pretty well.
again, I don't work with yellow too often, so I was really excited to work on this guy because I just I rarely work with yellow. It's just not a color that's in my normal range of what I work with. So being able to work with it was actually really, really cool. And so the method of the madness, I always do uh, whatever color is kind of the base color. Ironically, I put around the center or the ring of the base. Um, now, if someone were to be like, hey, I would rather have this painted a different color, I will do that. Like, I don't mind. It's just when I'm painting for things for the website, I will just paint the base, the color of the base of the color scheme that I want. Right, so this is just yellows. All right, now I'm looking for number two, which is this one. Probably gonna have to clean the wet palette after this, but narrow, narrowly got it on there. Um, and then I do that so I have a better idea of what it looks like while it's up here. painter set is that it comes with these kind of already pre done uh, color families of like six different colors in each color family and it kind of tells you exactly what it is What I'm doing with this is just kind of pulling it down just to add some varying texture in the color because uh, unfortunately when something's flat the only way to get texture on it is from the way that you paint it and that's why some people not me but some people are very good at that and have very good brush control are able to like really really put beautiful texture in their models and that gets into freehand work and that's just a whole other bag of potatoes to get into but so what I'm doing here is just hitting up kind of the edges and then pulling color down in places because these are these are relatively close enough to where you can kind of get away with just kind of being a little messy with it once you get into the real highlighting though that's when you need to just pay a little bit more attention to it really focus on where the paint's going and making sure that the highlights are where they need to be and so on and so forth. Um, but for this, it's really just about, like I said, getting some more texture in that color. Cause as you can see, well, you probably can't see it from here, but there's just, it's, it's got a nice texture to it now, um, more so than it did prior. people don't think about it too often but when you're looking at things 
because we, we've been told pretty much our entire lives, hey, this is just a color. But when we're looking at things, things that are higher up tend to have a brighter tone to them because they're more in the light versus things that don't necessarily have as much. So like in the case of this, when you're looking at it, the spots up here are gonna have more of a brightness to them than say these spots that are a bit covered by the shadow. Um, so it, it's just things that like I never thought about because I've, you know, I wasn't an artist, I didn't go to school for art, but as I've started kind of understanding art better through mini painting and things like that, you really have a better understanding of how light works. And that's very important when painting models. Because you really want to make sure you have a good understanding of what you're painting and what it's going to look like and more importantly what you want it to look like as you're painting it. And it does not help when you have really bad shapes and you're trying to do detail work. That shit sucks. This is where those washes really come to shine because when you start getting into this kind of like, I won't say that this necessarily is detail work, but um, I guess it kind of is. But when you, when you start to get into kind of these levels of getting the paint just on very specific parts, especially when it comes to like rope like this where you're basically just highlighting the rope that's more exposed this is where you start to get into the, like the fun stuff where the model starts to really take on a different form which i love i love painting i used to hate it because i was just so shaky and i wasn't good at it but when you start to get better and you start painting details and stuff like that becomes one of my favorite parts of painting because it really just makes it makes a model so much nicer okay. right, now we're gonna last little bit we're gonna do is work on the leather Brush than this 
this, or at least one with a better tip. tinged leather I was talking about. You'll see what I mean once I Strap is the second one, and then goes leather drop. Because we started with brigadine, so I just want to make sure that it's going up in a proper way. I don't want to go, you know, low tone straight to mid tone. I want to kind of in between it. We actually want to switch this up a little bit. Darker first. Yeah, that's better. As a starting point. Like, I'm definitely going to still go through and probably hit the highlights up with the regular leather brown. But for the Kind of one up from the dark, we're gonna go with bootstrap first.
Also, if I change my mind on uh, parts that I want to be leather, I can go back and do that later. But for now, we're just going to say that all of the straps and stuff are leather. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Well, I think that's all the time that we have today. I got some pretty good work done. Definitely still some leather leather pieces I need to work on, things like that. But it's it's taken shape, and that's pretty good. I'm not. This is a bigger model than what I usually paint, um, especially with this much detail and such. But um, yeah. Super excited. Might finish them on Thursday. Depends on how quickly we get done with the uh, character that we're doing uh, that we made earlier today. But uh, that's going to do it for me today. Um, appreciate you hanging out. Um, if you aren't already following the channel, please do. Uh, if you have a financial ability to, please consider subscribing. Uh, follow me on all my socials. Subscribe to my YouTube. If you're on YouTube watching this, sorry I didn't say hello earlier, but hello. Um, yeah. Thanks for hanging out today. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed. Got a giveaway going on for starter sets for this new paint that I absolutely am in love with. Um, and yeah. So actually, I'm gonna take the strap out. Dry out and go back. But yeah. Thanks for hanging out. Like I said, hope you guys have a great rest of your night. I will see you all on Thursday for the last stream for a bit. And yeah. See you later. Bye. Ugh.